Okay, we've got an interesting integral here today. This one's from MIT 2023 quarterfinals, round three, problem one. We have the integral from zero to two to the 10th of the sum from zero to infinity of the fractional part of x over two to the n dx. So as you can see, there's quite a bit going on. And I think we'll just start with the fractional part. So for my first step on it, we can use the definition of this. If we have the fractional part, of some number let's just use x here we can use this definition that's going to be the same thing as just x minus the floor function of x so for example if x was say like 3.23 or something like that we would just get back 3.23 the floor function rounds it down so it'd be like minus 3 and we would get just like what it sounds the fraction part is what we get out of this so using this thing here, we can split it up on the minus sign and create it as like two separate sum integrals and we can just deal with them separately. So let's take a look at that. And now with it split up with our two pieces, I'm just gonna deal with the easy one first. This one is actually gonna be pretty easy because the X, we can just take that and pull it out of the sum, okay? And then we've got one over two to the N so if we look at, actually, let me just deal with the sum and we'll look at what's what left in here. It's gonna be, let's write it as one half to the N. That's just, that's just gonna be geometric series. We have our formula for the geometric series, which is just gonna be one over one minus X if this thing is X. So for this sum, we'll just do it out really quick. It's gonna be one over one minus, plug in the one half right here. Again, not worried about convergence because we just need our x value less than one or the absolute value of x less than one. So doing this out, we get one half in the denominator, flip it, and we have a two. So when I get rid of all this stuff, you'll see that what we have is a really simple integral. What you'll see here is that it becomes just power rule because all that's left is all that's left if the sum is two, we just have two x dx. And so we just do power rule, we get 2x squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to 2 to the 10. The 2's cancel, the 0 is nothing, you plug in 2 to the 10, and so what we have for this first integral is just going to be 2 to the 20th. So what we'll do to continue is we'll capture this value here, I'll put a label on this integral, we'll call it j, just because maybe the original integral would be i. So then. When we come back later on, our solution is going to be 2 to the 20th minus this j integral. And now let's work on this one. Okay, so now moving on to our j integral. The thing I was thinking about at first is integral is clearly finite, right? We're capped at this 2 to the 10th value, which happens to be 1024. But then the sum is infinite. So what's going to happen is even when we get to the top bound of the integral, and this is going to infinity, and we have 2 to the n, so the denominator is going to be blowing up to infinity while the x value is going to be capped. So a lot of these values are actually going to be zeros. I mean, everything beyond this um, 2 to the 10 value. So my first thought on it was, what if we just kind of get rid of this infinity and I call this a 10? My thinking there is because if n is 11, it's everything's going to be zero when n's 11, right? So there's no reason to even have an 11. But then thinking about it a little more carefully, that actually doesn't quite make sense because even at 10, we never reach an integral. You never evaluate at the bound. So you can think about it like getting to 10, 20. You can think about our top value as being like 10, 23, or actually in reality, like 10, 23.999. It's getting close to this value and never reaching it. So what happens is when n is 10, all those are zero as well. So we don't need that. We can just go right to nine for this upper value here. But now what we have here is a finite integral, finite sum, so no problem just swapping the order. So we can just reverse this and bring the integral inside. And now from here, what I wanna do is just a u substitution to clean this up and simplify it. Probably not necessary, but I kinda of like it this way. So we'll start with this, just substituting for the whole thing. Solve for x, so we have x is gonna be two to the n times u. Take a derivative, dx is going to be 2 to the n du. So we'll go ahead and substitute. We have our sum on the outside. First, updating our bounds, we plug 2 to the 10 
in here with exponent properties, it becomes two to the 10 over two to the N or two to the 10 minus N like that, combining the base. And then you plug zero and it's just zero. Then this part just becomes floor of U and our DX becomes two to the N DU, but we can bring the two to the N outside of the integral as a constant. But now here with this simplified down, this is gonna be pretty easy to deal with. We can just break it up into integrals just separated by one. So we'll create a new variable. We'll do like an integral from some integer k to k plus one. And then when we do that, now for the floor of u, when we know that all of our u values are between k and k plus one, the floor is just gonna round it down. So every one of those values is just gonna be a k, integrating du. And then we're just gonna sum all these up within here. So it's just gonna be a sum that goes from k equals zero to not quite two to the 10 minus n, but this just minus one. But now the k is just gonna be a constant. We've got no u in our problem, so we're just like integrating one here. When you do that, let me just come over here really quick. When you integrate that, you're gonna get u evaluated from k to k plus one. But this is just gonna be k plus one minus k. This just becomes a one. So what happens is the integral goes away and we're just summing up the constant k. So this is gonna turn into just the sum of just k from k equals zero to two to the 10 minus n minus one. But now of course, we don't need to start at zero. I probably could have got rid of the zero a long time ago, but it doesn't really matter. Just because if we just plug in zero, it's gonna be zero. So we can actually start this at one. And now we have the triangular numbers. We just have like the first, even though it's a large number, we'll call this, let's call this m. So we have like the first m natural numbers. So the formula for that is gonna be just m times m plus one over two, where our m is gonna be this thing. So let me just fill that in. It's gonna be two to the 10 minus n minus one. And then the next one's just gonna be two to the 10 minus n all over two. So let me just take this thing we found right here and we'll plug it back in for this integral into this sum actually and see if we can get close to finishing it. All right, now all we have left is simplification, and we've got a bunch of things with a base of two, so that's good news. Even that's got a base of two. First, let's divide two in here, I think. So if we do that, I can just make this two to the n minus one. Then go ahead and simplify. We'll multiply together these two things with the same base. So when we do that, adding exponents, the n's actually cancel off and become a zero. So we get minus one plus a 10. So we have two to the ninth now which of course is a constant that can come out front. And when I do that, let's actually split it up into two sums, breaking it on the minus sign. So the first one we have two to the ninth in front, and then we're gonna have this term right here, but I'm actually gonna write that, let's write it as two to the 10 over two to the n, splitting it up again. And the second one, we just have a one. So let's write that out. But here when you're summing a constant value, it just becomes multiplication. So it'd be like times nine, if we're starting at one, but we've got this zero, so this is actually gonna be a 10 right here. This here, the two to the 10th is a constant, again, that can come out front. And so multiplying two to the ninth times two to the 10th, we get two to the 19th. And then here, let's write this a little differently, one over two to the n, I'll write it as half n. And now, the only thing is it's not infinite anymore, right? So now this is gonna be our finite geometric series here. For this thing here, we'll use the finite geometric series formula we have over here, where the k value is gonna be the nine, and our ratio is gonna be one half. So, well, let's do it off to the side. So it's gonna be one minus one half to the k plus one is gonna be 10 over one minus one half. So then this here becomes a half. We flip it, we get a two. I'll get a common denominator and write this as two to the 10 over two to the 10 minus one over two to the 10. So then what's left, we're gonna have two to the 10 minus one in the numerator. We'll multiply in the two, I think, and we get two to the ninth. So we'll take this and just plug it right back in for our sum. But then I can cancel out two to the ninth with nine of these and it becomes two to the 10 distributed in. And what we have for this expression, this is for our J expression. It's gonna be two to the 20th minus, distribute to the minus one, two to the 10th, minus 10 times two to the ninth. And we'll take this, throw it back in for our J, and then we can finish it off. And now finally for the payoff, we get to cancel the two to the 20th. So that's gonna go away and be zero. Distribute in the minus sign, 
minus times minus is plus, minus times minus is plus. Like we said before, two to the 10th is 1024. Two to the 9th is 512. So we have 10 times 512. So adding 5120 to 1024 for my final solution on it, we just get 6144 and that's it. Okay, so there you go. Good one from MIT 2023. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.